What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so we are getting into, uh, we're getting into Batman killing a guy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing about that, but funny enough, Batman kills KG Beast again. So here is, <laughs> here's the whole idea. And we'll, we'll explain a little bit more about what that means here in a second. But initially what this does is this picks up with KG Beast basically arriving in the US. Now, this is a bit ambiguous. And the reason why is because KG Beast, he's been around for a while. And in reality, the last we saw was that he died. And we could, well, kind of died. And we can talk about that here. We can talk about that right now. So when All-Star Batman kicked off in DC Rebirth, that was kind of Scott Snyder's way of just sort of telling the Batman stories he always wanted to tell outside of the existing continuity of of DC Rebirth, and the stories would just kind of fit in wherever they fit in. That was really kind of the, the, the idea behind it. And of course, again, you know, Scott Snyder could get away with that because, you know, he and, uh, and Greg Capullo kind of had this landmark run on Batman. I would say probably the best Batman run in something around 20 years. And so when you look at that, you look at the whole idea of KG Beast, and the way this played out was that it was it was really kind of like a, a comic book adaptation of the most dangerous game. And for those of you guys who had never, never read that story, which I would highly suggest you do, it's one of the best stories ever. Uh, the most dangerous game was a, was a story about a guy who hunted people. Getting fed up with hunting animals, he literally started hunting people because people could hunt back. But nonetheless, the way that KG Beast ended with All-Star Batman, it was really just like Batman pushing him off a cliff, essentially, and then Batman being saved by Duke Thomas. And so we didn't really know the fate of KG Beast. But with the thing about his character, with him showing up, it's literally just like amassing arms and armament. It's, it's going to a place, ordering guns, and then basically like setting things up and organizing things. And the reason why is because what's going on while KG Beast is doing all this is you've got Batman and you've got Dick Grayson. Now, the way this starts off, Tom King does this so well. The way this starts off, it's nothing special. It's just Batman and Dick Grayson fighting like zombie you know, like zombie mummies. And it's kind of cool, but it's really more of like the repartee between the two. It's like the jokes and the, the giggles and all that kind of stuff. And this, this is a very important thing to keep in mind because we've talked about this before. We talked about it a lot during Injustice, but we talked about this before that Nightwing has and, and really continues to be this kind of bright shining star in the DC landscape. He was always kind of like the one that sort of kept everybody cheerful. In the worst of situations, he's the one that made everybody laugh. And when you look at this whole thing, that's exactly what it is. He's cracking jokes with Batman and it's just kind of like, all you ever do is grunt. So like, let's, let's reverse roles. We're like, you tell jokes and I grunt. It's just these funny little moments, you know, these these, these little things like that. And Batman kind of plays along, but it's the, the cool thing about this is Bruce Wayne is just like dark and brooding, right? He's just like pissed off at the world. That's, that's really his, that's really his shtick. He's just angry. And when, when you have that whole, that whole thing, if you've been reading Batman long enough, you can tell by the way that writers do things, you can tell when he's getting a chuckle out of something, even if he doesn't show it. And Dick Grayson has been around Batman long enough to be able to tell those small little nuances, those small little things, and it works. And so as these two guys are, are you know, as they're, they're going through and doing their whole thing and and you know they end up having like this this funny little race this is kind of cool they have this funny little race where it's like we're gonna shoot off our little our little grappling hooks and then like the first one there wins of course batman wins because it's batman what would a story be if batman lost <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, when they're going through and they're 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 kind of having their their back and forth and they're enjoying each other's company basically, like they're two friends hanging out. In the middle of all this, KG Beast loads up a sniper rifle and kills Dick Grayson. And this is I mean, it's it's big. I mean, Dick Grayson has suffered through things like this before, but it's it's a pretty significant moment for, for Bruce. And here's the reason why. This is why this works so well with Tom King. If you look at the story in isolation, it's, oh man, another story where, where Dick Grayson is, you know, where he might be dead and he might be gone, you know, and it's kind of easy to scoff off. But if you look at Tom King's run, the totality of his run for what it is, and then you look at like James Tenyon's detective comics and you kind of combine the two together, what you get is like the last straw. Since DC Rebirth started, there's been Dark Knight metal because of Batman's actions and meddling with time when he was sent to the past by Darkseid that led to Barbados arising and like the dark multiverse coming into existence. Clayface was reformed and then he was killed. I mean you, you, you've had all these things happen. Selina Kyle, Catwoman was gonna marry, was gonna marry Batman and then she left him at the altar. The guy's life has just been getting progressively worse. Worse and worse and worse and worse. And then like Dick Grayson's dead now. It's like a crushing thing. But KG Beast loads his stuff up and leaves. That's the nature of KG Beast. That's what makes him so dangerous. When it comes to him as a character, he debuted back in 1988. He was made by Jim Starlin and he appeared in uh, in like a, I think it was a 10 issue series and it was called The Night of the Beast. Ultimately, when he first debuted in DC Comics, he was brought in by the fact that the Cold War was essentially winding down and relations between the United States and Russia were beginning to cool off. And it was setting the stage for the US and for, for the USSR, or I guess what would become Russia, to basically begin mending the bridge. And this led to a rogue general basically activating KGBs and sending him out for the purpose of killing like a handful of important officials 
officials, some political, some business, or what have you. This led to Batman intervening, but because of the fact that KG Beast was a Russian national, had he been arrested and turned over to the police, he would have been basically sent back to Russia because at the time, it wouldn't look good for the United States to extend an olive branch. And so in response to this, Batman basically locked him in a cell underground and left him there. And so the idea was that Batman killed KG Beast. Now, ultimately he ended up escaping. And because of the fact that Batman doesn't kill, it was just kind of like an offhanded remark of, well, I told Jim Gordon that he was okay. And you know, I told Jim Gordon about him and then they, they took him and that was that was the end of that. But the way it was original, the way it originally ended, basically KG Beast was left to die by Batman. That, that, that's literally the way it was designed to play out. Now, with regards to KG Beast proper, one of the things here is he's got like cybernetic enhancements, little things that sort of, in, that, that, that make him more dangerous and more prodigious than your average assassin. He's skilled in a wide array of different martial arts. He's literally designed to be a one-man army. The other problem with this though, is that we never really learned about KG Beast's backstory. All we knew is that he was a product of the KGB itself. And that's it. That's really all we had. And so going into this, basically it brings into the idea of his father, you know, where like KG Beast starts banging on the door and his father fires off a shot and he opens the door and then KG Beast is there. Then it's like, okay, so we're going to start learning more about his past. But the difference here, or I guess the, the big thing here is that with Batman, he's pulling out all the stops and that's what happens from time to time. And that's why this is done so well, because what Tom King is doing here is drawing on the aftermath of death in the family. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, death in the family was the story where Jason Todd basically died at the hands of the Joker. And in response to this, Batman lost it. Like he got as close as he ever got to becoming the Punisher, basically. He was beating people half to death. He was taking the extra step more so than he needed. And that led, of course, to the introduction of Tim Drake. Tim Drake came along and he deduced the identities of Dick, Gra uh, Dick Grayson and, and Bruce Wayne as being uh, Robin and Batman, respectively. Tim Drake ultimately joined forces with Bruce Wayne and he became the new Robin. But during that time period, that interim period, before Tim Gray, uh, Drake became the new Robin and before he was able to kind of reel Batman back in, he was brutal. And that's exactly what's happening here. It's not nearly as long of a stretch of time, but it is pretty brutal because he shows up at Tommy Gunn's place and just throws him through a window. And that's not normal Batman fashion. I mean, throwing like a battering around his neck and like reeling him back in, he's snapped. But it makes sense though. It's Dick Grayson. I mean, he's he's fought and bled alongside Batman for so long. And so where he's, he just kind of like, I mean, literally like yanks him back in. That's when Batman gets information he needs. And we end up finding out it's K, like he basically finds out it's KG Beast. KG Beast was the one who took out Dick Grayson. And that's an important thing to realize here because Batman realizes he's not someone to trifle with. Now it gets a little hairy here. What ends up happening is he basically ends up traveling to meet with Bronze Tiger. Now, this is one thing to bear in mind. Bronze Tiger is pretty dangerous. If I'm being honest with you, like he's pretty dangerous. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure in Red Hood and the Outlaws number 20, back in, in 2013, when he appeared, he was basically established over the course of that and like his various runs with Batman as being equal to, if not better than Batman when it comes to martial arts. And he's actually defeated him a few times. Now, of course, Bronze Tiger is also a protector of Gotham, but he's also a person who's who has some some pretty significant dealings with the, with the criminal underworld. And because he's traveled around so much, because he's seen so much, Batman asked the question, who trained KGB? Now, when it comes to this, this question being asked here, it's a little strange strange because again this kind of goes into the whole idea of DC sort of picking and choosing what they keep from the Batman mythos before the events of the new 52 and so where we would largely assume the Batman knows about KG Beast he knows what he's about he knows his history so on and so forth the question is does he truly know that or is he just kind of running around with it and that really seems to be the case and he basically doesn't really know anything about KG Beast I mean Bronze Tiger is literally explaining to him a bunch of old school you know old school guys trained KG Beast on, on his martial arts skills and, and assassination efforts and so on and so forth is Batman learning about him and and so again, we kind of have to assume Batman doesn't know anything about KG Beast. Take it for what it's worth. But the, the important thing about this is that Bronze Tiger warns Batman and he says, look, what you're going into here, facing off against the beast, against KG Beast, this is not a small thing. You're going to fight a man who can kill you, who's one of the most dangerous people in the world. So if you want to go do that, that's fine. Just be aware, you might be going to your own funeral in the process. And so that's why this is big, is because it's basically this kind of establishing fact that like KG Beast could kill Bruce Wayne. It's basically establishing the danger of facing off against someone like the Beast. Now, picking up with the KG Beast, you know, proper and have him conversing with his father, you know, when he shows up at his dad's house and essentially talking to him, the important thing here is that it really kind of establishes that like KG Beast never really had a chance in the first place, that his father was hardcore. His father was brutal. More so than that, KG Beast is equally as tough. His father really like beat the crap out of him all the time in an effort to kind of, you know, toughen him up. But KG Beast himself had taken all those lessons and made himself a hardened person as well. And so what he'd done over the 
course of his career, over the course of KGB's career, anyone who knew who he was, anyone who spent any real measure of time with him, he killed them, including his own family. He turned himself into a veritable ghost. His father is really the only person left who knows who he is. His trainers, the whole nine yards, they were all eliminated. And so where Bruce Wayne goes through and figures out that like the father of KGBs is the only one who knows where he is. And basically that's most likely where Beast would go at the very least to try to take care of these last bits of who it is that knows his identity. We end up, you know, kind of switching back and the Beast takes out his dad. And that's the brutal thing is he's, and this is something to bear in mind here. The way this is done, the way it's written, the way it's drawn, it's emotionless. He doesn't shed a tear. He doesn't cry. He just fires off a shot, kills his dad, takes a shot of alcohol, and that's the end of it. Now, the other half of this is that with him being so prodigious in terms of his combat skills, his enhancements, and so on, he sniffs out pretty fast that Batman's on his way. And this is probably one of the best parts of any Batman story I've ever read. Tom King, I swear to God, man, this guy, this guy's got a golden pen when it comes to writing Batman. Because there's this, there's no, this is like a scene from They Live, all right? There's no words here. There's no talking here. It's just straight knuckle fighting. Batman throws a battering through the window and the two of them just get into this knockdown drag out fight. And in reality, they're fighting to kill. They're not fighting to wound. They're fighting to kill. And that's not something that you normally see with Batman. As tame as he is here, in terms of the fact that he's holding, like he's he's fighting clear headed with logic and reason he's not fighting emotionally, he's completely emotional because the, the, the closest thing he had to his son has just been killed. How else would he react? And that's why he's fighting with such vengeance. That's why he's, he's fighting with such wrath. Like this guy is going to die. But the crazy thing about this, KG Beast gets the upper hand. And again, that's designed to show how dangerous he is. KG Beast gets the upper hand on Bruce Wayne, even with only having like one actual viable arm and the other one being a prosthetic, he gets the upper hand on Batman. That's how dangerous KG Beast is. And so the way this plays out is awesome because Batman uses one of his one of his little grappling hooks, fires it off at KGB and basically breaks his neck in the process. Now, this is a crazy thing because Batman could have killed him, but he doesn't. He leaves him there out in the cold just leaves him there. And that's what's so crazy about this is like, it's kind of a replay of the original like Night of the Beast, but like it's out here in the middle of cold in the middle of nowhere. Now in reality, this is more or less Batman taking the stance of like, I don't kill. And, and in truth, he's not really killing KG Beast. He's letting nature do it for him, which is fudging the numbers, but it still works. You know, it, it, it still, <laughs> it still works, but it's, it's, it's so cold and it's so methodical. Under normal circumstances, we look at Batman and it's just kind of like, yeah, he's cold and calculating and methodical. But with this, it's not really, I mean, it is that part of him, but it's also just emotionless. This man's going to freeze to death in the cold and I don't care. He deserves whatever he gets. The closest hospital is 300 clicks that way. It's, it's insane. Like it's, it's, it's way out there. Like you're probably going to die here. You're probably going to freeze to death because when it comes to KGBs, that's one of the important important things to bear in mind. When it comes to KG Beast, despite the fact that he has these cybernetic enhancements, he's still largely human. He has to eat, he has to sleep, and he's still left, like the rigors of cold can still impact him and can still kill him. And so that's the crazy thing. The, the big question Bruce asks here is, you are, I mean, at the end of the day, despite how dangerous you are, despite what you're capable of, you're still just a henchman. You're still just a killer for hire. Someone hired you. Someone hired you to take out Dick Grayson. I'm gonna find who that person is. And when I do, woe betide them. Woe betide their poor souls. Because maybe I'll kill them. I have no idea. But that's what's so dangerous is because it's anybody's guess what the hell Batman's gonna do. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like. And yeah, Tom King does it again. Jesus, I will catch you all later. Peace.